Brexit. Britain's exit from the EU was decided in a referendum earlier this year. Now, talks on Brexit due next year look set to be tough and complicated. So MEPs met experts and academics here in Brussels to get more clarity on what the future of UK-EU relations will look like. John Bruton, a former Prime Minister of Ireland, set out the kind of options that Britain is facing. Does it interpret the decision in the referendum as requiring a hard Brexit where they interfere with people living and working in Britain from the EU and vice versa and have no participation in the single market? Or does it interpret it literally, which is simply that they can leave the EU uh, which would still allow them to stay in the customs union, as Turkey has done, or in the econ economic area, as Norway has done, both of which involve not being in the EU. So it's up to Britain to decide which of these various options it applies for. He went on to give his view on the four freedoms debate that will be central in the Brexit talks. I think it's not really logical to contemplate having capital free to move across borders and people not free to move across borders. And I can fully understand why the EU negotiators are insisting that the four freedoms go together, they're not to be separated. MEP Paolo Rangel is the EPP spokesperson on discussions about the future of Europe and chairman of the European Ideas Network, which organised this event. He was pessimistic about the upcoming negotiations. I was expecting uh, that uh, uh, we could have a, a quite good agreement for both parts, but now, uh, after uh, the Prime Minister's speech in the Tory convention, I uh, am really very pessimistic. So I think that there will be a clearly a very tough position from the 27 states. I think that uh, President May has uh, made something that I thought that was impossible. It was to unite the 27 states in this issue. Mr Rangel also attacked the Conservative Party for its idea to compile lists of foreign citizens in companies and universities. I really regret that we have uh, heard the uh, Minister of Justice uh, uh, speaking about lists of uh, foreigner citizens in enterprises and in universities. And I'm really astonished because I know the, the British Conservatives and they are so attached to freedoms and to the human dignity. So these values and principles are so uh, uh, important for them that uh, uh, this kind of lists, uh, they seem the Erdogan's uh, uh, list. So it's something that is not, mm, I would say, adequate for uh, uh, a, a state like the United Kingdom that is uh, really a land of freedom and of freedoms. Immigration controls and access to the EU single market will be central parts of Brexit talks. Dr Thomas Horsley, a senior lecturer in EU law at Liverpool University, gave his view on that. There's not a doubt that the immigration issue is, is a red line, if you want to use that language, for the UK government. The extent to which it will compromise on that uh, in the negotiation process once Article 50 is triggered is an open question again. And it will be uh, a question I think that a lot of people are asking is, are they going to uh, sacrifice access uh, to the single market, particularly full access in certain sectors, in order to uh, keep keep control over immigration fully or certainly in a way that is not uh, through the, the current uh, legal framework. The European Ideas Network is hosting another debate on the crucial security and defence implications of Brexit in November. Brexit talks are due to start sometime next year after the British government has triggered Article 50 of the EU treaties. Find out more about the activities of the largest political force in the European Parliament by checking out eppgroup.eu. Thanks for watching and see you next time.